this is the African Rights Theme. You see, Minuji arrived in the world unsolicited. For nine harrowing months, like a worm, she haunted a girl's body, herself a mere child. But Minuji didn't lodge in the girl's body because she let her. Although, on the contrary, it was in spite of the girl's dauntless efforts to evict her. You see, the poor girl had been advised by friends, other children, that if she drank tea, cordial, really thick, it would flush the baby out. So the girl had emptied a whole 50 gram packet of broke bone tea in a plastic mug and added a little hot water and left it to soak until it was so dark and conk. She then distilled and swallowed the turbid solution and for extras, she ate the tea dredges as well. This she did daily for f the first three months of knowledge, but Murunji clung to the walls of her stomach with fortitude. <laughs> now an elderly aunt had noticed a change in the girl. Her gait, the swing of her tail, the attitude in her neck, and the eyes direct as if challenging. Are you more woman than I am? <laughs> The aunt understood this language and whispered, a man must be watering her, <laughs> and sat back to enjoy the spectacle that was her sister's daughter. <coughs> the girl grew lush, luscious, teeming with promise. Then it became too good to be innocent. The girl's eyes were now lucent, her hands were pale, and the dent at the base of her neck danced erratically. But most of all, she spat incessantly. The aunt panicked and went to her sister. Have you looked at Nora lately? This might be rush words, but I doubt she's on her own. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness if you ask me, for didn't the nosy aunt at least save Murundi from the girl's resolve to rid herself of her? At the time as when Murundi's intentions could no longer be hidden under thick white jackets, the girl was withdrawn from school to wait for the impending arrival. When Mulunji arrived, the girl laughed heartily. Her efforts to rid of, rid of her had at least made a mark on the baby. When she had to, the girl called the baby BBT, broke bone tea. <laughs> <laughs> the girl kept the baby at arm's length. She constantly slept through Mulunji's hungry cries at night until her mother woke her up. And she only nursed her when her own mother shouted at her, you found what you are looking for of men, now feed it. After a year of constant abuse, the girl felt no need to correct her mother that it was neither a man nor man, but just a boy. As if knowing the mother, the girl's disposition, the baby, as soon as she was put on the breast, grabbed it in a baby's unforgiving grip and sucked the very life out of it. On a full stomach, Murundi never asked for attention. On her mother's instruction, instructions, the girl introduced Murundi to solids and sat her on her own bottom after the third month. In the sixth month, the girl was allowed to sleep through Murundi's hungry cries and nursed her only during the day. Two weeks before the sixth month birthday, the, the breast was snapped out of Mulunji's mouth for good. Only the girl celebrated Mulunji's sixth month birthday by dressing herself up and the baby and packed everything that belonged to Mulunji. Her feet led her back to the scene of crime, the room where she called to Mulunji. <laughs> when she arrived, the door was locked, but the woman next door was out doing laundry. Convinced that the baby and girl were going no further than her, the woman asked the girl who she was looking for. The girl pointed to the doll. Him. He's in exams. He probably won't be back until five. I'll wait. And who is this? The woman smiled as she wiped her hands in her skirt and took the baby off the girl. Before the girl answered, the woman exclaimed, She is dark. Is she a woman? Brook bone tea. <laughs> of all craves in the world, you crave tea? 
It stained her skin, didn't it? And they laughed heartily. The woman tossed Mulunji up and down, tickling and singing and dancing her on her lap, and Mulunji giggled wildly. Then the woman stopped and whispered to the girl, the way mothers whisper to each other. Did she hear it? No, just a few crumps here and there, and she was out. <laughs> you know, I've often wondered at this absurd pain that is childbirth. I mean, school children walk it just like that. Yet veterans like me labor hours and hours of untold horror. I wonder, is it imagined or sheer indulgency? The girl who had forgotten how it hurt or felt and didn't care anymore, she rubbed her shoulders. At about 3.30 in the afternoon, the boy returned. He was hungry. He had planned an early night to wake up early and prepare for the following day's paper. He wore khaki shorts, a white shirt, black socks that had landed and sagged around his ankles. His shoes were shapeless and dusty, and his school bag hung on his hip like a burden. He saw the girl with the baby waiting outside his door, and a guilt twinge propelled him to the veranda, his finger pointing at the baby. What is that? <laughs> what does it look like? <laughs> but it was only once. A uh, once with a thrust, I must say, <laughs> the matronly woman answered, looking at the baby. Look at her, she tempted the boy to look at the baby. Does she look like once to you? This, I say, is a proper woman. The girl stood up to leave. The boy asked, where are you going? Home. Who are you leaving her here for? Her father. Oh, don't worry, she's not demanding. The boy dropped the bag on the ground and dropped himself on the veranda and dropped his, hand, his head in his hands. When he lifted his head, the girl was gone.